Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, today in this particular video, we will be discussing about iterables and iterators. So, these are very, very important terms and we will discuss from scratch. I will write each and every line of code in front of you. I will try to explain. Now, first of all, if I just consider iterables, uh, so if I take an example of list, list are basically iterables. Why I am saying it as iterables? Because I will just tell you. Suppose I create a list with some values like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, and then in my next line, what I can do is that I can quickly print a for loop saying that for i in list, okay, and I'll just say print i. Pretty much simple. I've just iterated through list, lst, and I'm printing all the i variables. So as soon as I execute this, you can see that each and every value can be seen over here. Now, in short, we can see over here since we are able to iterate through each and every elements, I can call over here as list is iterable. Okay, list is iterable. Now there is also something called as iterators. Okay, I'll just tell you the basic difference between iterables and iterators. But just understand that whenever I'm saying list as iterable, that basically means all these values. Now, since once I have initialized list over here, these all values will be allocated in the memory locations. Now, when I am iterating through it, that basically means I'm iterating through the memory allocation. And you can see over here, that is how it is getting executed. But now when I when I just consider about iterators, now just let me just show you. I'm just going to create a cell over here so that you'll be able to understand. Now there is an inbuilt function called as iter. Okay. Now this iter function will actually create or will actually convert a list into an iterator. I'll just tell you the basic definition of iterator, what exactly it is, but let, let me just consider this. I'm just uh, giving my list over here, whatever I have defined over here, LST, and I'll just execute it. Now here you can see that the output it is saying as list iterator at this particular memory location. Now let me just say you some of the properties of iterator. The first property of iterator is that guys, over here, as soon as you initialize the list, all the values are actually saved in the memory location, different, different memory location. Whereas in the case of iteration, not all the values are not stored in the memory or memory or it is not initialized in the memory location. As soon as we call one function, which is called as next, then only that particular value will get stored in the or initialized in the memory. Again, to tell you guys, let me just repeat it. So if I am actually converted a list into an iterator, what will happen is that all the values will not be initialized in the memory. So unless and until we don't call an inbuilt function, which is called as next, once we call the next inbuilt function, then only that first element that is present inside that iterator will be initialized in the memory. Now, what does that basically mean? Now, let me do one thing. First of all, uh, now you know that as soon as I use this iter inbuilt function, now if you also want to see the definition of this, you can see over here, it is basically an iterator, okay? So here I have basically given an inbuilt uh, value or I have given a parameter which is iterable. So here list is basically iterable. Now let me just show store this particular value over here in list one. And if I execute this, now you can see that list one is iterator. Okay. So we have basically converted this list in which is an iterable into an iterable iterable sorry which is into an iterator using this particular iter function. Okay. So here it is stored in list one. Now, how do I retrieve the elements inside this particular iterator? That is the main thing because over here we 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 cannot see all the elements at once because the me the memory is not initialized for this particular elements that is present inside this list iterator. OK, now in order to see the elements, what we have to do is that we have to use an inbuilt function, which is called as next. Now, as soon as I write next list of one here, you can see that I'm getting the first element. Okay, and we know that inside this list, the first element is one again, guys, only after using the next function, we are able to retrieve the element. Okay, now after this, if I execute this next statement again, what will happen is that it will now go and pick up the next element that is initialized. So one by one, it will be only initialized one by one as soon as we hit the next statement. That basically means one will get stored in the memory, two will get stored in the memory. Like that three will get stored in the memory like that only and and the, and the process will be continuous that you need to understand over here you can basically see that as soon as i have created a list okay which is an iterable this 
whole me- whole thing is getting stored in the or initialized in the memory but in the case of iterator only one element is getting initialized at the memory at a time only when you are calling the next function okay now similarly if i execute this it will go to the next element again if i execute this it will go to the next element and similarly it will go to the last element now after it goes to the last element you will be able to see that we will get an error because it says that it will give us an exception because there are no elements inside that iterator okay this is pretty much important to understand now if i want to start it again from first i just have to execute this again i'll get the list one iterator again i can basically continue that same process now this is one way of seeing all the values inside an iterator and that is just one by one okay by using the next inbuilt function and always remember guys the main functionality of iterator is that whatever value is there inside it it will not get stored or initialized in the memory at once okay only one by one it will get initialized because understand in some of the scenarios where you have a huge list of values right huge list of values where you have a lot of information right at that time it is unnecessary to save everything in the memory like how we are doing in this particular list right so similarly what we can do is that we can convert that into an iterator and after we convert that into an iterator by using the next statement we can basically retrieve those values now this is one way of retrieving those values the other way what i can basically do is that i can also run a for loop and always remember iterables can also be run through a for loop and the elements can be retrieved and for iterators also a for loop can can be actually implemented and uh, the elements can be retrieved so if i write for i in lst1 okay and if i say print i now here you can see that i'm getting all the values and why i have started from 2 because i executed one next statement then the pointer went and pointed to the second element that is my second element of the list over here you can see that my list element is over here and it pointed over here this list is getting converted into an iterator right so if i execute this once again now if i run a for loop from scratch from fresh right then i will basically be getting all the elements over here like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 right always remember guys many people have asked me why do we use iterators just imagine suppose your list is having million of elements okay million of elements and uh, for each and every element as you initialize in the list it will get stored in the memory that much memory will be required but if i convert that whole thing into an iterator i'll not require that much memory unless until i don't call that particular element it will not get initialized into the memory that is the most important thing to understand and that is why an iterator is basically used okay now you see in this unless i have defined this particular list value right now if i convert this into an iterable oh uh, sorry iterator then i can also run a for loop inside it that is what i have actually done so as soon as i run a for loop then only the thing will get initialized and here by using the next method also you can basically retrieve different different elements and the elements will go and i mean the elements will get displayed unless and until the list is not completed or the iterator is not completed once the iterator is at the last element again if you try to execute the next statement what will happen it will directly give you an uh, error saying a stop iteration now remember this for loop right this for loop whenever i am running why it is not giving us the stop iteration that was, that is also a point that you should understand because as soon as it reaches the reaches the last element over here it is also printing it and it is stopping it by itself right so in for loop that stop iteration stop iteration exceptional handling is already done now you see this in this particular case what i'll do i'll just uh, i'll just execute it once again from here so here so as soon as i execute over here now see now this is my next if i execute again one over here then this is again executed and let me just go to the last element now as soon as i go to the last element now if i execute it i'm getting this exception right so this should also happen in the for loop so in the for loop this particular exception is specifically handled you know because it can traverse to all the elements that are present inside the iterator okay so as soon as it reaches the last element it will come out outside that particular for loop that you should basically understand okay so let me just show you once again i'll just execute this and i will just execute this for loop now you can see that all the elements are basically present over here so a very important thing to understand guys always remember list is an iterable okay if you want to convert this iterable into an iterator you basically have to use the iter function 
there is also a wake which is called as generator which we will discuss in our upcoming videos okay if i want to convert a list which is an iterable into an iterator i'll basically use this iter function okay and here you can see that i've created a list iterator uh, object which is stored in this particular memory location the basic fundamentals between iterable and iterator is that now if i consider this list once i initialize it right all the values are getting stored in or initialized in some memory location but if i convert this list into an iterator the memory will not be initialized initially okay only when we will be calling the next function like how we have called over here then only one by one element will get initialized unless and until uh, we don't execute everything suppose if i just execute one time this next of list one it will go and point to the first element right so internally there is also a pointer that element will get initialized in the memory and again if i execute next of that particular iterator that will go and point to the next uh, next item whichever item is actually present over here so it will then display you two now you can see in this particular example suppose i'm printing it for the first time it has printed one right so it is pointed to this particular first value and it is got initialized also if i again execute it it will go and point to the next value and similarly like this it will go till the end of the element okay and always remember iterator can also be traversed by using for loop and always remember the stop iteration exception is already handled with the with the help of this particular for loop so this is all about this particular video i hope you understood i hope you got some idea i hope you understood why we are specifically using iterators and what is the basic difference between iterables now just imagine if your list had million of elements at that time it is always good that you store that as an iterator and just call those elements whenever it is required then only it will get initialized in the memory so this was all about this particular video i hope you like it please do subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead thank you one